everyone thanks for visiting my channel if you're new here welcome I'm Carol the thrifty chic housewife I'm glad that you stopped by and I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel so today we're gonna do some more canning you guys have um, requested more soup so today we're gonna be canning up a delicious black bean soup um, and speaking of canning, I just want to mention for those of you who may not know, I have started a canning group um, on Facebook. I started a Facebook group for canning is what I should say. Um, so if you are a canner, which I'm assuming you probably are, or you're interested in canning, please feel free to stop by, check us out over there. We are having a ton of fun, just such lovely people there that help answer questions and encourage one another it's a really positive place and i'm just so pleased with how it is turning out and everyone that's been joining in the fun so i encourage you to stop on over check us out and hopefully join our group as well so again back to our video we are going to be canning up the black bean soup in the amish canning cookbook now this was a request from one of you who are in my canning group so i thought we would give it a try it has a little bit of a twist on it which i think is going to be interesting and that was one of the reasons why it was a request you all were interested in knowing how it tastes it does include some orange juice which seems strange in black bean soup, but honestly, the more I thought about this recipe, citrus flavors are very common in Latin or Cuban cooking. So, and black bean soup tends to have those flavors in it. The, it has cumin and onions and garlic. So it, it leans to that Cuban, Latin, Mexican uh, flavor profile. So I think the addition of the citrus juice, the orange juice, is going to be delicious here. So uh, that, we're going to make the recipe just as she has it written. Um, I just want to say real quickly, I know some of you have had some reservations about this book i'm not really sure why it is written by a master food preserver i know there are some groups who for some reason don't like this book but i i i'm not sure why i haven't obviously canned everything in it but everything i have canned i've been able to confirm with the national center of home food preservation as far as being safe so um i'm not sure so if you're not comfortable with using this recipe then just don't that's fine um, but I don't have any problem with this recipe or any recipe that is in this book and as a matter of fact it's one of the books that I highly recommend for those who are new to canning it's got a lot of great recipes in it but a lot of staple things that are good to learn how to put up so that you can have it on your shelf so anyway it's in this book I like it and I'm excited about trying this recipe so to begin, you obviously need black beans. It's black bean soup, so her instructions are to soak overnight. I didn't soak overnight. I just did a quick soak, which means I sorted through my beans, put them in a pot, covered them with water by two inches, brought them to a boil, boiled them for two minutes, and then I've let them sit for an hour. It's kind of been over an hour now, but they have set, you wanna let them sit for at least an hour if you're doing a quick soak, or you can soak them overnight. It, it's up to you. So I've done my quick soak. So what we need to do now is I need to drain the soaking liquid off. And then her instructions are to uh, add fresh water, cover and boil them gently. I'm sorry, bring to a boil, reduce your heat and simmer them for 30 minutes and then drain them and keep them warm. So I'm gonna work on that. Um, and while that's happening, um, I'm gonna work on my vegetables. The vegetables that she includes here are carrots. You need four carrots diced. You need two bell peppers. You can use red or green, or you can use a combination. I'm gonna be using a combination. I'm gonna use one of each. She also uses sweet potatoes in this. She recommends two sweet potatoes peeled and diced. Um, I'm only gonna use one because the one that I have is ginormous. So I'm just gonna use one, but if you have smaller sweet potatoes, go ahead and use two. And then uh, she also has you use three onions. My onions are on the larger side, so I'm only gonna use two. I don't think I need three. So that's gonna, you're gonna have to gauge that by the size of your onions. Um, it would be fine to add three this size, but I don't think I need that many. So I'm just gonna add two, and then she wants you to use 10 cloves of garlic minced, 
which I have set aside. And then the other thing that it calls for is five tomatoes skinned, seeded, and chopped. Um, my tomatoes are done, so I'm not going to use fresh tomatoes. I am going to use a jar, a pint jar of stewed tomatoes that I canned up earlier this year. So um, this is a great way to use some things that you've already canned. Um, obviously, I wouldn't use vegetables I've already canned because they're going to be in the canner for an additional hour and a half. The processing time for this is an hour and a half for quarts. So I don't want to, wouldn't want to use vegetables, but tomatoes, and I'm going to use my delicious corn stock. I'm so excited about using this. The recipe calls for four cups of beef or vegetable stock. So I'm gonna be using my roasted corn stock. That flavor is gonna be delicious in this soup because of the flavor profile. It would also be fine to use chicken stock. So whatever you prefer is absolutely fine. But my point is things, because we often get the question, can I recan things that have been canned? And the answer is yes, you can, but you wanna keep quality in mind. Like I said, this, it, Recanning vegetables is never a good idea. They're not gonna hold up, the quality of them is gonna be terrible, um, and so there's no point in doing that. But tomatoes are perfect for that, and certainly your home canned stock is perfect for that as well. So we're gonna be using those two things that have already been canned, and then we just need some herbs and spices. So we are good to go. Like I said, what I'm gonna do now, I've soaked my beans, I'm gonna drain that soaking liquid off and I'm gonna put fresh water on them and I'm going to simmer them for 30 minutes. While that's happen happening, I'm going to chop all of my veggies. Okay, we are back. I went ahead and chopped my veggies like I told you and um, brought my beans up to a simmer and I let them simmer while I was chopping my veggies. So her next instructions, I'm gonna tweak just a little bit. Her instructions are once your beans are done, drain them and keep them warm. I've drained them. And then she says to combine your remaining ingredients in another large pot, bring to a boil and boil gently for five minutes. Then when you, um, ladle the soup into your jars. She's wanting you to divide the black beans equally between six quart jars and then ladle the hot soup broth, including the vegetables over the beans. I don't think we need to do that. I'm gonna kind of gauge how many beans I'm putting in my jars as I'm filling them. And I, I'm going to fill my jars about two thirds full with solids and then top it off with the liquid. I think doing that is overkill and then I have to have all my jars out. It's called staging and you do it that way. I know there are people who don't like that method either. So I'm going to just, I've got my beans done. I'm gonna put the rest of my ingredients in with my beans, bring it up to a boil, and I'm going to boil it gently for five minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and fill our jars and start canning. I don't think we need things to be separate. So I'm changing that up. If you wanna follow her instructions exactly as they're written in the book, feel free. But I think that that's overkill. I don't think that we need to do that. So. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of our stuff in with my beans. So we need all of our veggies. Like I said, I told you what we use, the garlic, the onions, carrots, um, sweet potato, Okay, all my veggies are in. Now we're going to add our four cups of stock. I'm using the roasted corn stock I made. If you guys have not canned that up, you need to try it. It is so good. We need four cups of water. And we need three and a half cups of orange juice and then our tomatoes. And as I'm putting this together, I'm not sure if I mentioned at the beginning, the amount of beans she had you use was six cups of beans. I don't think I said that. So I did use six cups of beans. And then the other thing we need to add are our spices. And her, I'm gonna go by her recommendations and then I'm gonna taste it. Um, you can safely switch up your spices as long as they're dried any way that you want to. Uh, two tablespoons of salt, I'm using canning and pickling salt. Two tablespoons of ground cumin, a teaspoon of 
ground black pepper and a teaspoon of cayenne pepper for just a little bit of heat in the background. But again, you could change that up. So I'm gonna stir that together and then I'm going to turn my heat on, bring it up to a boil and we're gonna boil it gently for five minutes. While that's happening, I'm gonna get my canner and my jars ready. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. Um, I went ahead and gently boiled my soup for five minutes like her instructions said to do. The one change I did make in light of the fact that we know how beans can tend to swell in the jar and absorb liquid um, through the canning process and, and as they sit on our shelves, I added two more cups of water, uh, so I did six cups instead of four, but the seasonings are spot on. It's so good, and that um, orange juice in the background is fabulous. So it, you don't really identify it as orange juice. It's just a little bit of something that really adds to the flavor of the soup. So I'm really glad that she has that in her recipe, and I'm glad that we're trying it that way because it's super delicious. So we are all set for canning. Um, modern canning guidelines state that you do not need to pre-sterilize lids or jars if you're canning for 10 minutes or more and we are uh, we're going to be processing in quart jars so our processing time is going to be 90 minutes i believe it's 75 minutes if you're doing pints um, so i've washed my jars and i'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water always make sure you start with hot jars and then my lids i just wash them really well and rinse them really well and set them aside so we are ready to start filling our jars. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my jars about two thirds to three quarters full with the beans and the veggies and then I'm going to top it off with the soup liquid. So um, that's how I'm going to do it. Um, that way I make sure I have plenty of liquid in my jars and we can even out how much we're putting in our jars. So I'm going to bring you in close and we're going to get started filling jars. Okay, the other thing I did mention is I do have my rack in my pressure canner. This is low acid food, so you must pressure can this. You cannot water bath can this. And um, I have my rack in there and I have three inches of near simmering water in there. So we are ready to get started. Okay, we have two hot jars. I think you can see pretty well. Get my lid set over here. Okay, so we're ready to start filling. So I am going to kind of ladle out the veggies and the beans. Try to sift out some of the liquid. The soup is so pretty. Look at all those beautiful colors. It's gonna be as pretty as it is tasty. So we're gonna ladle in our solids. thirds to three fourths full. That's pretty close. And then we'll add our cooking liquid. And we're looking for one inch head space. Once you have your food in your jars, you can go ahead and use your debubbling tool, a chopstick, or a plastic butter knife to release the air bubbles. So just poke around your jar. And then you wanna double check your headspace. It can change a little bit after you debubble. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more liquid. Then I take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean my rims. And then you wanna take your lid and center it on your jar. And then apply your band to fit or tip tight. 
Fingertip tight just means that you just want to apply it until you feel some pressure. You don't want to go past that really. And then you can put your jars in your canner. Oh my goodness, look you guys how pretty that is. So excited. Okay guys, I got seven quarts of delicious soup. Um, so we are ready now to put our lid on, but before I do that, just as an FYI to those of you who are new, I take the leftover vinegar that I use to clean the rims and I put that in my canning water. It helps to keep your jars nice and clean during the canning process. It keeps uh, mineral deposits, minerals that are in your water from collecting and depositing on the outside of your jars, making them look cloudy. So that's why I do that. So we're ready to put our lid on. I'm using the All-American Canner and you need to line up your arrow with your notch and then you want to tighten your thumb screws two at a time, opposites. And then we wanna crank up our heat to high to get this baby going. Um, once we start seeing a steady stream of steam coming out of our vent, we want to let that happen for 10 minutes. It's called venting. So we'll vent for 10 minutes. We'll put our weight on. Make sure that you know what your altitude is so that you know what PSI you should be canning at. I'm a less than a thousand feet, so I'm gonna be canning at 10 PSI, but make sure that you know for sure. Um, and then we'll put our weight on, bring it up to temperature, and when our weight starts rocking, then we can start timing and I will bring you back. Okay guys, we have a steady stream of steam. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it is a nice steady stream. It's pretty long. Um, and you can hear the water starting to boil in your canner and you can hear your jars moving around. So for those of you who are new, that's what venting means. That's what you're looking for. So we want to let that happen for 10 minutes. So I'm going to time 10 minutes and then when we come back, we can put our weight on. Okay guys, our venting time is up. So we're ready to put our weight on. Make sure you find the right PSI for your altitude. For those of you who are worried about putting on your weight, there's no need to be concerned. You're not going to get burned. Um, I just hold it in my fingers like that, know where your hole is, and just rock it right onto the hole. It's not a big deal, so don't be afraid of that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let it come up to temperature. Once we get to the correct PSI, my weight will start rocking. For those of you who have an all-American canner, just as an FYI, I'm trying to be a little more clear for those of you who are new, it is a dual gauge canner, but your dial gauge is only for reference. It does not dictate when you start canning. Your weight, it works as a weighted gauge canner. So when your weight starts rocking, that's when you need to start timing. And it should be, your dial gauge should read right around your correct PSI. For my All American Canner, it always is at 10 PSI on my dial gauge. It does not go to 11. If you are using a dial gauge only, you should have your dial should read 11, but mine does not go to 11 when I'm when my weight starts rocking. So it's really just for reference. So don't try to make them match. I know some of you who are new have been concerned about that. My weight is rocking and it's not at the right PSI on the dial gauge. It's just for reference. So calm down about that. You want to go by the weight, not by the dial. So, okay guys, we are up to temperature. So we can go ahead and set our timer. For 90 minutes, if you are doing pints, it's 75 minutes. Now, once uh, you start your timing, you want to reduce your heat. We do not want our weight rocking that hard throughout the entire canning process. That's too much. So we need to slowly reduce our heat. We don't want huge fluctuations in temperature in your canner because that can cause siphoning. So just slowly reduce your weight until you your weight rocks one to three, one to four times a minute. Make sure that you follow the instructions that come with your canner. There are canners where the weight is required to consistently rock throughout the entire process. But for the All-American Canner, we're looking for one to three, one to four times a minute. So slowly reduce your heat until that happens and process for the 90 minutes. Okay guys, just for some more clarity, for those of you who are new, um, your weight should rock and then stop and then rock and then stop. And I wanted to give you an example of that. Okay, it was rocking and now it stopped and there'll be a pause.
and now it's starting again. And you want that sequence to happen three to four times every minute. Okay guys, once my processing time was up, I turned my heat off and I've now returned to zero pressure naturally. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to take off our weight and I'm bringing you in for this part because I've gotten this question. When you go to take off your weight, you lift it gently and if you hear, still hear steam escaping, you need to put the weight back on really quickly. If you take it off and let the steam escape, that will cause siphoning in your jars and we don't want that. So I always lift it up a little bit. If I hear steam coming out, I just put it right back down, wait a few more minutes and then try again. So once I can take my weight off, I'll wait 10 minutes and then open my canner and we can see our delicious black bean soup. Okay guys, we are all done with our soup. Um, once I took the lid off, I let the, my jars sit in my canner for about another 10 minutes to cool. So now you can see our beautiful black bean soup. Does that not look delicious? Yum. Oh, we didn't, doesn't look like I had any siphoning. And it looks like we have plenty of liquid in there. So I'm a happy girl. This is going to be so delicious this winter. So nice to have on your shelf. So, um, I appreciate you guys coming along with me today. Let me know what you think about this recipe. I know there were some questions about the orange juice and that being odd. Uh, also, the sweet potato is a little bit different, but in um, Cuban cuisine, um, they do that a lot. Beans and sweet potatoes go together, so it's a really nice combination, not to mention really pretty. It's a really pretty soup with those beautiful colors going on. So um, if you have any questions or comments for me, leave them for me in the comment section. I will be happy to get back to you. Um, make sure you give your jars plenty of room to cool. Let them sit for 12 to 24 hours. Then you can remove your bands, check your seals, wash your jars thoroughly, and um, label them and store them in a cool, dark, dry place. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you have a great day and Join us over on our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there and we'd love to have you. Have a great day.